You're like this. Oh, it just even sounds great. Hello everyone and welcome to my childhood bedroom. If it's echoey, I apologize if you notice the sunburn on my cheeks. We're back in California. I'm gonna give you a little tour. I'm gonna go through my bookshelf that is in my room. I moved out 10 years ago, technically. Like I went, I entered college 10 years ago. Isn't that insane? So because of that, during that time, Everything has changed. My wall color has changed. This has now become the guest room. This is no longer my room. But obviously my parents kept some of my books. I have noticed that some of my books have been roaming around the house. So maybe we'll also go on a little journey through my home and try and find my missing books. So this isn't, this isn't like all of the books that I had, but also thinking about it, I don't think I bought a ton of books. Like for the amount of books that I read as a kid, I don't think I bought a ton of them. I think my my mom works at the library. I think I was just raised on library stuff. Um, so this is gonna be maybe a quick one. I don't really know. Um, I haven't really dug into what's in here, so this is gonna be kind of a first reaction video too. But yeah, shall we get started? There's no good angle to do this in either. We're very cramped up in here. My bookshelf is like here. Um, so this is gonna be a little bit messy, but I think it's gonna be a little bit of fun You can see who I was as a child. So let's begin greetings. I have opened it. It's in this little chest thing um, That I don't believe I don't believe was part of my childhood. I don't really remember um, <laughs> You're gonna hear that a lot. I don't remember a lot of things beginning with the top shelf. Oh, I remember this book I love this book. This is the little book of Hindu deities and it's this cute little cartoonish, short, very simplified explanation of some of the Hindu deities. It is by Sanjay Patel. It's real cute. Um, there's that. I have these two Jonathan Safran Foer books. We'll pass those by. Memoirs of a Geisha. A complicated <laughs> book. The thing is, it's a beautiful book but um got not such a great background it's written by a white man first of all i wish it were written by somebody else that's all i can say um i've got fahrenheit 451 um to be honest i think that i only have that because of high school no shade at ray bradbury but um it is what it is i've got girl with the pearl earring which i don't really remember reading i have oh this book i remember really liking this was the lady in the tower i'm pretty sure this was about Anne Boleyn by jean platy um, I don't know. I went through, when I was a kid, I went through like a hardcore Tudor England obsession phase and a phase that hasn't super ended. Like I'm always very interested in the Tudors. Um, so yeah, anything Anne Boleyn, you're gonna, I'm gonna be interested in it. So this was actually a really interesting one. Um, Never Let Me Go Obviously by Kazuo Ishiguro. Oh, what? Picture of me and my grandpa in this book um this is a ticket san diego to san francisco i guess i was going home after i had come home from christmas i was going to seoul and i was using it as a bookmark bougie <laughs> the things you find in my books um i don't remember reading this but i have a book about the metropolitan museum of art and then i have i think this might have been a I think this was a birthday gift but this is the essence elements of style but there's that the this is like the catch-all question mark shelf i also would love to hear how you guys organize your shelves because even as a kid i would just organize them like i'd organize them by series which as you can see this is a harry potter shelf it is what it is so i would organize it like if i could buy series and then it was literally just how things fit on the shelf i never did it like by color or like by genre um i could not and i still cannot so that's what's going on next up i actually love this shelf and this is going to be impossible for me to bring you down to talk about i just got a new tripod and it actually holds my camera isn't that crazy and i have a mark on my nose okay are some of these not finished oh they aren't finished that's so funny i bought this for a plane trip i think i did only a couple of them it's a me so pretty sudoku book that's so weird why do i still have this okay anyway let's just grab a couple of these off the shelves 
I have a, this is not mine, but I have a JD Salinger. I have this really cute book. It's called Titus Rules. Um, and it's about the Queen's Corgi and he has, I, I forget what it is, but it's just one of those adorable little kids books that has like, right? It's cute. So anyway, Titus Rules. I've got this Coraline I remember buying. I got this in the UK, but like for some reason this cover is ingrained in my memory and terrifies me to this day. I don't know why. Um, and then this is, this is the freaking best book ever. I read this so many times as a kid. It is Mr. Popper's Penguins by Richard and Florence. Florence Atwater and it's just about this man who I forget why You're like this. Oh, it just even sounds great. Anyway, what is his thing? So this is miss mr. Papa. He randomly gets interested in explorers and the Antarctic and so he like writes a fan letter basically and Captain Cook is like hey man let me send you a penguin and so he sends him the penguin <laughs> whatever happens there sudden comes along another penguin and then there are many many penguins and they just get into a, a lot of mischief and he decides to like train them and they kind of are this traveling circus of penguins I don't really know. I literally don't remember anything other than very much enjoying this book. So yeah, Mr. Popper's Penguins was a great one. I loved this one. There's The Wizard of Oz, and then there's The Marvelous Land of Oz, and then there's... I read a bunch of these. I love the illustrations. Um, but yeah, I went through a phase where I read like all of the Oz books like Zelda of Oz. Oh, this one even came, this one even has the colored versions. And then this, my mom told me that she packed all the other ones in this series because I guess I own the whole series, but um I have the first one and this is The Children of Green No, which I have talked about before. Um and I literally cannot explain to you what the series is about. There's like this kid who for whatever reason moves to his like ancestral home in the country and it's just him and his grandma but then he also finds out that like the ghosts of his great grandfather as a child is there and like he plays with I don't know I can't tell you what the series is about but um I just remember absolutely loving it it was just it's very much like this Victorian kids tale you know it's by L.M. Boston Lucy Maria Boston I really really loved this series and I'm glad that I still have this one and this too I don't know why why we don't do these anymore but like this book has illustrations too like a chapter book but it has illustrations yeah, there's a lot of like hidden stuff around this like abandoned manor. So I was into it. Anyway, ah, so I'm going to make an entire separate video about this series and this film. And I posted a story on my bookstagram about it. And I'm so glad that you guys, like so many of you messaged me and you were like, Georgia Nicholson, I love her. Yeah, so I don't know why I only have the sixth one in this series. And then he ate my boy in trancers is the title. I really hope it's not problematic. Like if I read back on it, I'm sure I would have issues with it. But um, it is this series that starts with Angus Thongs and Full Frontal Snogging, which has been made into a hilarious film. But it is written, it's a diary. As you can see, there are timestamps. It's literally just the confessions of Georgia Nicholson. And she is this British girl. I think she lives in Brighton. And um, she begins the story by she is in high school and she falls in love with this guy um, who he she calls the sex god. There's no sex in, in these books. <laughs> and like her boy in trancers are her, she bought false eyelashes and stuff like, she's just so funny. She has a cat that is insane. Um, she She's just, she's very much a teenager. She is Louise Renison, really captured like, she's so self-conscious 
and she like will try all these like ridiculous things like I'm going to meditate and listen to dolphin noises in order to become a proper woman and all this stuff and then at the same time she's like overly cocky and like the tiniest things get blown up into the biggest she she's just very very funny it's really excellent um again there's definitely probably issues now these are from i read these in middle school 2005 like laugh out loud funny these books um we've got another tutor one we've got this beautiful book i don't even know what the book is about but i stole it from my university library because they make a lot of money and nobody was reading these books and so i just took it my completely beat up can you see you see how loved these books were this is a wrinkle in time and a wind in the door adore these books so much i i can't say enough about them i love them i love them i love them i love them i've talked about them before i will link a video above <gasps> I do have it. This is the book I was talking about. I forget in what video, but when I said I thought that this was a fever dream and it wasn't and I, I've i just read it a million times, this is the book and I still have it. So wouldn't you know? Oh, we also have Number the Stars by Lois Lowry. We had to read this in fourth grade, I believe. Um, this is about a non-Jewish German girl and a Jewish German girl who are friends and then the Nazis start to take over and um, they have to hide their friend. It was a very hard one to read, obviously, um, but I'm very happy. I'm very glad that we did read it when we did. So, number the stars. And then we enter my favorite section. Oh my god. I think I have more. Oh my gosh, I have so many. Wait. All right. <laughs> oh man i have one two three four five six seven eight of these if they were available in america i would have bought more i purchased these all when i was in england so these all went into my suitcase and my parents made us travel using only carry-on luggage so <laughs> i also got my first vaccine shot so yay for me <coughs> enough of that it's dusty it's dusty in here it's been a while my foot i cannot tell if i'm i'm blurry in real life so if i'm out of focus it's not the camera's fault um these are called horrible histories and depending on where you're from in the world you might know about these they are cartoony style very quick history books um that are just so funny and they they're so they're very british humor so um it it's very self-aware it makes fun of itself it recognizes how ridiculous some of these situations are i mean talking about the beginning of world war one right like who the hell was franz ferdinand and why did like that one little thing for example this one look at this like boo you stink you know like just how kind of childish many issues in our history were. Um, I just really liked it. So I have First and Second World War, Queen Elizabeth I, Awesome Egyptians, Terrible Tudors, even more terrible tutors. I'm telling you, you guys, it was an obsession. Cleopatra, Ireland, and then the Cutthroat Celts. Um, absolutely freaking adored these books and I might read them while I am here at home. I don't think I'm going to take these home with me, but these are absolutely excellent. <laughs> excellent books. This is another book that I swear to God I thought it was a fever dream. It is called The Fairy Rebel by Lynn Reed Banks. She wrote Indian in the Cupboard. Um, oh yeah, okay, I remember this. So basically this older woman is in her garden and she sees a fairy which is usually not supposed to happen because grown-ups aren't supposed to see fairies and she's crying because she wants to have a baby so badly and it's just not working out and so this fairy is like you know we aren't supposed to help humans but she's really sad so maybe i should and so the fairy helps her and so the woman has a baby that is like blessed by fairy luck you know um so the fairy queen finds out and is pissed and so the 
child has now kind of grown up and the fairies kind of come after her and try and trick her or whatever like the fairy queen wants her revenge on this baby um so yeah i literally don't remember any of the details but um i just remember absolutely loving this book and yeah again again with the cute um let me find a cuter one like it's got all these cute <laughs> cute little illustrations the blue tuft right yeah the the baby had blue hair for some reason and then like the evil fairy queen yeah so this is a book that again was like a fever dream in my brain we're almost done guys i swear there's like very little left i loved these books if you liked i would say the lion the witch and the wardrobe like specifically the lion the witch and the wardrobe not necessarily the rest of oh my god the name escapes me the series chronicles of narnia thank you geez this had a very similar feel this one is called the doom spell it's a trilogy and i don't have this the second one for some reason but i do have the third one the wizard's promise and i got a signed one right yeah yeah i got it signed again this i purchased in england i i found this just randomly in a store in England. Ooh, what's this bookmark? Carlsbad City Library. I checked out a book in 2003. What is this even about? It's like these kids get... Okay, so these two siblings get snatched away by the witch. Um, ex and so they get like sucked into this other dimension. Except these kids, the girl, the older sister, happens to have magical powers so the witch is like "Ooh, i can use this girl but the sister is like no you're evil no way and so they like fight each other and try to find their way back into the real world um i just remember the imagery in this was fantastic it's very like ice queen going on um i really enjoyed it and i might read it again but yeah it's the doom spell and then what's the second one? The Scent of Magic. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So anyway, great trilogy. I don't know if anybody else has read it. If you have, let me know because I feel like I was the only person who had ever read this. But yeah, the Doomspell trilogy. Excellent. A Spanish and English dictionary. I have a Japanese and English dictionary. Okay, I also have like the rest is just Japanese stuff. I told you I liked kanji, right? So yeah, it's the rest is Japanese. Um... I got an advanced copy, I guess this is, I don't know why I got this, but this is Luca and the Fire of Life, which is the sequel to Haroon and the Sea of Stories, which I've already talked about as being one of my favorite books. It's just an arc, so it literally doesn't even have, it's like a tentative date, tentative price, etc. There it is. Anyway, let's talk about this book. I'm obsessed with this book. I'm so sorry you have to sit at the angle in which this mark is on my nose. I don't know what to do. Um, Pirates by Celia Rees. She also wrote a book called Witch Child, I think, which is about the Salem witch trials. I adored this book. Oh my god, like look at the inside. Right, like it was just so good. So basically, if I'm remembering it correctly, let me do it without looking at it. There is a girl who lives in England and her dad is like a trader or something. He has like ships. I think he trades like sugar or something. So probably not a good guy. She decides to run away for whatever reason. Um, I'm realizing that I'm losing, quickly losing the plot in my brain. Right, so there's Nancy and Minerva. One of them is the rich merchant daughter. The other is her enslaved friend. They set sail from Jamaica. So they like escape on this pirate ship. So they join a ship that already is a pirate ship because she doesn't, she's avoiding an arranged marriage and then Minerva is escaping slavery. They both decide like, screw it. We actually don't want to go to England. So they live in Jamaica. They're like, actually, we don't want to go to England. We just want to be pirates. And so they just become pirates. And it's, it's freaking great. I remember adoring this book it's just very much like pirates of the caribbean but without all of the like hocus pocus kind of stuff again i haven't read it in a long time so i don't really know how well handled minerva's character was um but i just i remember reading this book so many times and i would love to know if any of you guys have read it so pirates by celia reese what else is there i have the complete works of lewis carroll 
literally it's all just Japanese studying books. If you guys are into K-pop or Korean music in general, if you know Tablo, he is in Epic High and he is also just a solo artist. He is also a writer and I read his book Pieces of You. I underlined a lot of it, I, I seem to remember. But yeah, it's just like kind of these short short story kind of things going on. I enjoyed it in high school immensely. I haven't read his new book though, I don't know why. And now, if we look above to this, <laughs> this is my Murakami shelf. It's getting toasty in this room. So yeah, I've just, I've got them all. Don't know what else to say. What is that? What is this? A reader's guide? Oh, that's weird. Okay, well, anyway, um, I do have more of his books, but they have been relocated around the house. But that's that. I got this in Windsor. So yeah, those are my, those are my shelves. I definitely think I had more books, but again, they have been moved. Oh, and Alice, Alice. And then I do collect Le Petit Prince in every language for the places that I go. I don't seek it. It's not like a big important thing to seek out, but like if I see it, like I was in Rome and I happened to see this in a books bookstore, so I got it. So I have it in Japanese, Italian, Korean, Korean again, and English. So there's that. And this isn't my bookshelf, but I will show you the bookshelf downstairs because um, I showed it momentarily in an Instagram story and everyone was like, I need to see it. So here it is. Da, 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 da. So the story behind this bookshelf is that we are actually moving. As you guys might know, this is why I'm actually home at all and helping my parents move, which is very sad. Hence the boxes everywhere. Um, but in order to make the house look nice as we're selling the house, um, my mom decided to make a rainbow bookshelf. <laughs> That's why, um, actually, where'd it go? Yeah, like she has, she used some of my Murakami and stuff. But yeah, this is not even a taste of the books in my home. Everything else has been packed already. Louis, do you wanna say hello? Louis is a great reading companion because Louis does not like to move. Um, if he could stay laying down and sleeping all day, he would. So if you lay down on the couch, he will lay down with you. And he loves nothing more than to be a lap dog while you're reading. Anyway, that was a tour of my childhood books. Sorry that there weren't a ton. Um, they've mostly been packed, but again, like I said, I'm pretty sure that I just didn't buy a ton of the books that I read. Um, I made great use of my school libraries and my city library. But yeah, uh, let me know if you've heard of any of those more obscure ones. Yeah, I'm gonna leave you guys here. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. A um, Couple people requested doing like a bookstore of San Diego video but um, just right now, because I'm only half vaccinated, I'm not really going out and about. So I definitely do want to give you a tour of our library because I love our library so much. Um, but yeah, I, I'll have to come back to San Diego another time to do that. Anyway, once again, thanks for joining me. Louis, do you want to say goodbye? You want to go to sleep? I should leave you alone. I should leave you alone. Yeah. Okay. Well... <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. Thank you always. Bye.